Hello everybody, welcome back to the 1994 Biathlon season as we are getting ready for the second round of the season. And so here is our calendar. The second round of the season is at Canmore in Canada with Hilga Mikopath leading the way in the women's competition and Sven Fischer from Germany leading the men's competition. Will they both be able to keep their top spots? Well we'll find out as we make our way to the men's side of the competition. So here we go for our first of two feature races, this is the 22nd to 42nd race. The man in 22nd and currently leading this group is Jen Steigen who is starting 10th with Patrick Favre uh, 23rd who is starting in 7th position and Yuri Holobek is 24th and Holobek is starting in 8th position. So who amongst uh, this group will win this group? Will they make their way further up the table? Will they end up in the top 21 to be in the feature race for the next round? Let's get in this race and find out. Of course, and away we go. And it looks like it is a very good start there for... Unfortunately, I didn't actually check the names, which is really bad. Um, sorry about that. But it's a good start to whoever was starting in third position as being one of the Russians, so, it's, might, so it might be Karenko or Medvedev. So it's one of the two, but I, th I think this might be Karenko. As here we go, coming to the one kilometre mark, and the man leading the race after the first kilometre, it is Karenko, with Fashion second for Belarus. Haitalati is third. And first 21st, 6.2 seconds, so lap so Latvala, er Erki Latvala for Finland is currently at the back at the moment. And here we go, we come, there they are, the bias is coming around the corner for the 2.2 kilometer mark and it's still Kirienko out in front. Fashion second, high quality third, Passler fourth, Dolony is fifth from Ukraine, first 21st, it's now separated by 8.4 seconds. As our race leader Kirienko is heading to the shooting range for the first time. Of course Kirienko is number 3 so he'll be going into the number 3 slot and here we go. Here they are coming into the shooting range. Now who's going to be classified first? Kirienko going to be classified first coming into the shooting range. Okay and here we go. How's this going to play out? Kirienko's missed the first target. Okay, it's not a good start for Kirienko, as Kirienko looks like he's going to be going to the penalty loop twice, and Hatalati from Finland is going to come out first. So, a good start there. Dolony from Ukraine is going to come out, go clear, and Anderson's gone clear, and Thomas Kost from Slovenia also goes clear. So, Hatalati leads. In second position is Dolny from Ukraine. Followed by Thomas Koss from Slovenia. Anderson's fourth, Kirienko comes out in fifth. Then it's Frank Perrot sixth, Steignan seventh, Medvedev eighth, Favre ninth, and Sashern rounding off your top ten at the moment. Now first to 21st, what's the gap? 25.4 seconds. So Haitalati does hold the lead at the moment, who is 34th at the moment in the competition. Vesa Haitalati, 34th, followed by the Ukrainian of uh, Dolny, uh, Taras Dolny, who is 31st at the moment, and Thomas Koth, who is currently sitting in. Uh, Thomas Koth, 27th at the moment, so not too far away from being in the top 21. And here we go at the 5.2 kilometer mark. Kaitalati is 5.6 seconds ahead of Taras Dolny, with Kirienko going up to third position. So Kirienko showing that he has some good ski pace so and is making his way up the field, no problem. And here we go, coming to the second round of the shooting range. Now, can Kaitalati go clear again and hold on to the lead? Okay, let's see what happens here. So Haitalati is first, Dolny comes into the stream range in second, and it looks like uh, Kirienko goes comes in third, and Haitalati's missed a target. What about those behind him? Dolny's missed one target, Haitalati's got two rounds of the penalty loop, that's not what he needed. 
Kitty Enkel might have a good chance. Dolly Smith's three targets goes into the uh, penalty loop. And Kitty Enkel goes wide in his last shot. And look at that. We've got Leif Anderson from Sweden, who is currently 40th in the competition, has gone clear. Koss has gone clear. Fabri's gone clear. And Villapec has also gone clear. By Haiti ha Lati, just barely holding on to the lead. 0 0.4 uh, of a second ahead of Anderson. Koss is third. Perot is fourth. Krienko is fifth at the moment. And Fabri sixth. Philippic 7th, Stagnan 8th, Memphisev 9th, and Taras Dolny dropping down to 10th position at the moment. Now, this is looking interesting. Haitalati may have lost two targets but was able to hold on to the lead. Will he be lucky in the next round of shooting range? He is already pulling a good significant gap on Leif Anderson. So Leif Anderson may have the. may have the aim but ski pace may not be his strong point. Kirienko making his way up into third already so Kirienko uh, really char charging up the field so Haitalati needs to try and up his pace a little bit because Kirienko is definitely showing that he has got some really quick ski pace and in fact we see him going past Leif Anderson for second position. Brian Paris fourth, Thomas Koss is in fifth in the moment just ahead of Favre from Italy. And here they go, your first pick in 8th, Memphis Knights, Yuliki from Norway rounding off your top 10. Here we go into the first of two rounds of the standing shoot. Now let's see what can Haitalati do here. Haitalati could do it going clear here and hope Kirienko goes into the penalty loop because Kirienko definitely got the ski pace and he's definitely been closing in on the Finn uh, quite a lot. Haitalati's missed the target. Leif Anderson's missed the target. Well in the penalty loop for Haitalati. But Kirienko goes clear, which means uh, Valerie Kirienko is going back into the lead of this race. Just what the Russian wanted. Now let's see if we can pull a good time. Kirienko, 6 minutes 11 is his time coming out of the third round of the shooting range. Haitalati holds on to second, but he's now 5 seconds down. Yeah, looking further down, I'm not seeing anyone else going clear. We've got Thomas Koss is third, Leif Anderson is fourth, Frank Perrot is fifth, uh, Sakura from Poland goes clear, and we've got Latvala uh, around the back also going clear. Steignan, the elite, uh, the 22nd biathlete here, is currently looking, I think he said he was in eighth position, which is not too, not ideal at all. Oh, I've broken the board a little bit, so never mind. Um, Actually, no, I'll just check back here anyway. So, Kirenko is leading. Haitalati is second. Third place, Sleep Anderson. Followed by Thomas Koss, fourth pair up fifth. Steignan, Ilki. Steignan is sixth, not eighth. So, Steignan, 19 and a half seconds down. Not too bad, I see. And then we've got Sasha, seven, Memphis, seven, eight. Favre, ninth. So, Favre is 23rd. Needs down in ninth possession. Sakura. Going up into 10, thanks like to going clear in the shooting range. And here comes Valery Kirienko, who's going to come into the shooting range for the fourth and final time in this race. Question is, can he go clear and secure that he wins this race and thus gives himself a really good time to push himself up, further up on the leaderboard? He is 29th at the moment in this competition. And here we go, Kirienko's uh, gone wide with... And uh, he's missed two targets, this could be what Haitalati needs, but Haitalati's missed one target. Can't afford to miss another one. But he's missed uh, another target, he's missed two. And I think Kirienko might have secured himself uh, uh, the win. And we're just looking at Kirienko coming out of the penalty loop, looking further down on... The board. As has missed one, St Jane Steichen has gone clear. And so has Sasha from Belarus. So Kirienko leads 8 minutes 20.7. And who's going to come out in second position? That is going to be Haitalati just about, with Steichen in third. So Steichen doing really well, pushing himself up the board. Sasha is in fourth. Leif Anderson is fifth. Um, looking those further down, both Czech Republicans in this race, Holobek and Garabek, have gone clear. So, trying to finish strong, even though they're quite low down the field. 
Uh, Kirinko, 8 minutes 51.4 is his time at 13 kilometers. What's the gap between him and second place? And Haitalati, 8 seconds behind. So Haitalati could still finish second in this group, which is not actually a bad result for him. Now look at the 40.2 kilometer mark. Here comes Valerie Kirienko making his way around the corner. Here he is. With just. Now he's, all he's got to do is n complete another 800 meters to finish his run. Okay, but he's definitely increased the gap over Haitalati. Yes, 8.2 seconds. And here is Valery Karienko making his way down the last uh, descent and he's now got to just make his way to the finish line. So Valery Karienko wins the 22nd to 42nd race here in Canmore. Uh, it looks like Haitalati will finish in second position uh, with Jen Steigner going to finish in third place. Eight and a half seconds is the gap between Haitalati Karienko. 12.4 seconds and then it is Sasharn from Belarus. Let's just, now we just gotta wait for everybody else to make their way across the finish line. And here we go, everybody has made their way across the finishing line. So just to confirm, Valikarenko with a time of 9 minutes 39.8 finishes first. Visa Haitaleti finishes in second, Stagnan third, then it's Sashin, Anderson, Pero, Garabek, Mepesev. Thomas Koss and Patrick Favre running off your top 10 in this group. So before we get to the leaderboard, it's time for the first to 21st race. So, and here we go. So this is the first to 21st race. So as you can see, our current leader is Sven Fischer and he will be starting in fifth position. In second place is Lionel Lawrence, who is currently starting in 15th position and Alexander Popov rounds a few top three and he'll be starting 17 no he, uh, no Popov is starting 14 sorry so we've got Wolfgang Perner up Andreas Singel and Rico Gross on the front row for this first 21st race who among them will win this race and who among them will take the lead of the championship so without further ado let's get into this first 21st race and find out. So it is Perner we're focusing on. Yep, it is Andreas Perner from Austria and he is currently sitting in 18th position. With Zingel starting second who is currently ten in 10th position and Rico Gross who is currently sitting in 8th. And look at that, I believe that's number 5 that must be Sven Fischer already gonna uh, start flying his way into the lead of this race. So the German already determined to show why he is the championship leader he uh, the gap between him and second place Lawrence is about 23 seconds Perner is still holding on to the lead just barely first 21st separate by 4.6 seconds so not much in it between those at the front and those at the back the same Fisher trying to pull already pulling away from the pack so Sven Fisher is showing his incredible ski pace, which he possesses. Perner second, the girls third, gross fourth, glimpse of fifth at the moment. First 21st is now separate by 6.4 seconds. Has Tim Fisher determined to run away with this race and to increase his lead in the championship, making his way into the shooting range. So he isn't going to end up uh, exhausting himself so quickly so soon. And here we go into the shooting range. The go. Now let's see who will come out on top after this first round. Sven Fischer's missed a target already. He's missed two misses already from Sven Fischer. Not a great start. I think the ski pace might clearly prove to be too much. But look at this. We've got Patrice Bailey Salas going clear. Kirchner going clear. Basso going clear. Perner going clear. Popov going clear. Flander going clear. Okay, we're not sure who's actually going to be in first position, but I think it might be Bailey uh, Salins, who's currently sitting fifth in the championship. Wolfgang Perner is second, Busso third. So we've got three Frenchmen in the top five. We've got Perner second from Austria, and we've got Popov, who's third in the standings, in fifth place. And where's Sven Fischer, our championship leader? Ninth place, eight and a half seconds down from the leading, uh, from the leader, I should say. As the last of the Bathys make their way out of the penalty loop and back onto the track, we come to the 4km mark. 
and Patrice Baysons with her 2 minutes 31.7 is half a second half partner and it's two teammates Bissou and Flandern third and fourth this will do this is going to do the French team uh, a huge favor in the national the men's national standings because well because it gives them a better average their other French biathlete uh, Laurent is down in 17th position at the moment 18.4 seconds down Look at this, but still goes into second, so we have a France 1-2 at the moment, as Flandern is still behind uh, Wolfgang Perner. And where is the Frenchman? Flandern is 21st, uh, actually. So he has taken the last spot to get into this first 21st race. Here we go, here comes the Bathys to return back into the shooting range. I'm losing my words there because I'm so excited to see how this is going to turn out. Of course, here we go. Bailey Sands has missed his first target. Basil has missed his first target. Also, let's open the door for Wolfgang Perner to take the retake to take the lead. But he's missed a target. Basil's missed three. Perner's missed one. Vlad's missed two. Popov has none. Kirchner has missed none as well. So Kirchner and Popov go clear. And so is Andrei Singel, Tarasov and Drachev have all gone clear, so they should be in a good position at the moment, but Popov goes into the lead with a, with a time of 4 minutes point one. Karchner is in second, and where's Karchner? He is 15th in the standings, Partner third, Singel fourth, and Tarasov, who is sitting in 6th place in the championship, is up to 5th place. And their former leader Bailey Salins goes down to sixth place, but we still have three French athletes in the top ten, so they managed to hold on to that at least. And coming to the seven kilometer mark, Popov, the time of four minutes thirty one point nine, one point nine seconds ahead of Mark Kirchner, with Wolfgang, Wolfgang Parner still holding on to third place ahead of Andre Zingel. And there's also uh, Sergei Senior Tarasov in 6th place. And here they go making their way around the corner for the 8.2 kilometer mark. Uh, it looks like the I think the gap increased to 1.8 seconds it looks like. Well Wolfgang Perner not too far behind in 3rd. Bailey Salins into 4th. So he's gained a couple of positions. Got past Tarasov and got past Singel. Sven Fischer, our championship leader though, is in 7th position, 7.4 seconds down, so he's not too far behind uh, Alexander Popov. Of course, Pop Alexander Popov is currently sitting 3rd place in the championship. So this is a big deal for Popov, for trying to eat, uh, try and increase the gap as much as possible. Let's see what happens here. Popov misses first target, which is not good. We've had 2 misses from Popov, this could, uh, 3 from Popov. Okay, so Popov's had an absolute catastrophe here. This is exactly what Sven Fischer needed. But Sven Fischer has missed two targets. Kirsch has missed one. Uh, we've got one person going clear. That's Drachev. Okay, so Drachev might end up going to the lead. So we've got Neely of Neely. Flandin's gone clear. Bussel's gone clear. Gretel's gone clear. Uh, Bjorn Dahlen's also gone clear. But Drachev, it goes into the lead just barely ahead of Mark Kirchner. And look at that, we've got three Frenchmen in the top five once again. Tarasov 6, Gredler 7th, Alexander Popov going from 1st down to 8th, just ahead of the championship leader, Sven Fischer. It's with Bjorn Dallin rounding off your top 10 so far in this race. We've still got one more round of the shooting range, but this could be a dramatic finish based on how this race has gone so far. It's just lots of drama, it looks like. So where's Drachev sitting in the standings? He is sitting 17th. Vladimir Drachev in 17th position is holding off those in the first to 21st race. So good uh, good showing there from Drachev. That was going to do him a massive favour both for his, uh, sta his uh, standing as well as the, uh, probably Russia's average time as well. So really, really good job there from Vladimir Drachev. Here we go, coming down the hill. As he gets ready to go into the shooting range for the fight for the fourth and final time this race, before we move on to the women's side of the competition. And here we go. Here comes Sami Drachev into the shooting range, and we've got a bit of a battle for second going on on this 
on ski pace who is sat with Karchner is Bailey Salins. Bailey Salins will be desperate to try and get back to the lead of the race, especially with the, with one round of the shooting range to go. And Drasher has gone wide in his first shot, so has Patrice Bailey Salins. Karchner and Bissot all have done the same. Flandin is, however, going to try... Okay, Flandin's missed the target. Okay, well that's Sven Fischer. Sven Fischer's going wide, that's not what he needed. And Popov's gone wide as well, it's a bit of a disaster for those that had a good opportunity. Rico Gross missed his last start, so he's not going to go clear, but it doesn't matter now because Patrice Bailey Fallon comes out of the shooting range in first position. In fact, we've got France 1 2 3, Bissot second, Flandre in third, with Vladimir Drashev going up to fourth, but Sven Fischer in fifth position. A solid position for, for the German to hold on to this, the lead of the championship. We've got Gredler 6, Alexander Popov is 7th, Tarasov 8th, Karshner ninth, and Rico Gross rounding off your top 10. Coming to the 13 kilometer mark, 8 minutes 36 is Bailey Sounds' time. Now, Bailey Sounds is 5th in the standings, so this is quite a crucial result. His teammates both so he is sitting in. Uh, Buffo is, well, Flanders is 21st, he got the final spot to get to the competition, to this race. Uh, Buffo is 4th, okay, so one spot ahead of Bailey Salins. So, but this is a really good result, for not for themselves, but for the French team as well, as they head toward the, to the downhill, towards the finish line. And let's, and we're going to find out if it's going to be 1st for France, 2nd for France, and 3rd for France. If that's the case, then what a very, very strong performance from the three of them. So Bailey Sands, 923.5. And Spusso second, Flandin does get third, so it is a Fran an all-French podium. Drasher finishes in fourth, Sven Fischer fifth. Uh, Gredler will finish in sixth, followed by Popov in seventh. And we've got a battle for eighth here, and Tarasov going to beat Karchner. Oh, actually, no, it's a tie. Uh, they both got the same time. You could grow through to the top ten. I just gotta wait for everybody else to make their way across the finish line. And here is our final result. Three of the four French biathletes made finish in the top four. Dracher finishes fourth, Fisher fifth, sixth for Gredler, and Santa Pop up the seventh, with Sergei Tarasov eighth, Mark Karsher ninth, and Rico Gross rounding off your top ten. So with that result out of the way, it is time to move over to the women's champion women's competition and see who will be taking the lead from their side. And so here we go. This is our twenty second to forty second race with the leading uh, biathlete in this group being Anne Ellen Selbred, who will be starting at the back of the field with Natalia Parmakova, the next biathlete, 23rd, who will be starting in 20th. So we've got Delphine Barlet for France in the front row, along with Ivita Rubikova and Irina Kokojua. So who will win among this? Who will win this race among them? Will any of them end up in the first to 21st race the next round? Only time will tell as we get underway, and it looks like a really good start for Barlet, who's got an early lead already. And we can see the Czech Republican and Belarusian not too far behind uh, Barlet at the moment. Though it looks like Kokodura might be trying to make the move for the lead, and in fact, she uh, temporarily does, but I imagine Barlet is going to repass her, and yes, she does. And we now come to the one kilometer mark. Barlet leads with Rubiko a second and Ritsova from Russia in third position. First to 21st, separated by nearly six seconds. Mikolajic uh, from Poland, who uh, got the last place spot in 40 seconds, beat in this race at the back of the moment. And we now come to the 2.2 kilometer mark. It looks like Barlet is still going to hold on to the lead for now, unless. Cockajua, no, Cockajua and Berlin have the exact same time going through the 2.2 kilometer mark. First to 21st now separated by just by 7 seconds. And look at this, Cockajua pulling a gap on Berlin. So Cockajua takes the lead of this race as they just come around into the shooting range for the first time this race. Let's see who will come out of come out first. 
And who will get to the first? Who will enter their flame first? Palace Neil Grip from France, Sir Belova second, Claret third. So let's see how this all uh, plays out. Miss for Claret, Cockajuice missed one. And got a few misses here and there. Cockajuice actually struggling here. Neil Grip misses her last shot. Uh, Shellbread has gone clear, so it's Petrova from Ukraine. Uh, Sekiel from Finland's gone clear. Sedge Streamer from Latvia has also gone clear. So, the leader of this race is Petrova, with Shellbread right behind in second. New Grit is in third. Sedge Streamer from Latvia is fourth, and Sekiel rounds off your top five from Finland. Oh man, what a disaster for the Belarusian. I mean, she was leading uh, the race, then she went and missed a uh, koala target. That's going to send her far down the order. In fact, yeah, I uh, don't even know where she is. She might be at the back, uh, uh, possibly. But look at this. Shellbrain now takes the lead of this group. 2 minutes, 35.5 minutes her time, only 3 tenths faster than Petrova. And then it is uh, Corinne Neugret in third position, Sedge in fourth, and Zerbalova running through top five. And here they go, coming to the 5.2 kilometer mark, uh, so we can see our leaders going past uh, the timing gate right there. And Selber and Petrova, say exact same time going through 5.2 kilometers, but it looks like Petrova may be sneaking herself into the lead unless Shellbread can uh, jump back into jump back ahead of her and here we go coming into the shooting range for the second time this race okay here we go who among them will come out on top uh, at this round of the shooting range we've actually got quite a few groups have formed one two if I say things like five groups of athletes have formed up and down the field here we go into the shooting range. Who's going to go clear here? Shellbreds missed our first target. What about Petrova? Petrova's on a roll here, but Shellbred has missed three targets. But Petrova goes clear, and then she goes into the lead of the race. Will anyone else go clear? Maybe go and jump into second position. There's quite a lot of misses in the shooting range. Rubikova has also gone clear. So Petrova leads. Who's going to be in second? It is going to be drum roll, drum roll. In fact, no, Petrova's actually got a huge lead over everyone else at the moment. Petrova's doing really well. It's Rubikova is in second. Neilgrit is third. Zerbalova is fourth. Right the top five is the Latvian of Sedra Strima. Seren is seen as sixth, who did go clear. We noticed Shellbread first down to seventh, and. Well, she's struggling to get up this hill at the moment, the Latvian. But at the 7 kilometer to mark, there's Petrova. 433.7, but we'll focus our attention on the battle for a second. And going through the 7 kilometer to mark, it is going to be Neil Grit, who will jump into second. Rubikova is third. Zerbralova is down fourth. So we've got two Ukrainians in the top five. Well, or should I say three Ukrainians in the top six? Uh, is another way to put it. Uh, looking down the order, uh, Anna uh, Shellbread is the uh, is the leading uh, woman in this group in 22nd position, and she is nowhere to be found. So she's clearly struggling on this track. That's definitely going to push push her down the order. Just under five minutes coming into the shooting range again for the third time. The first of two rounds of standing shoots. Let's see what happens here. Can Petrova go clear and in possibly increase her lead over the rest of the field? Pressure is on Petrova. Where is she in the standing? She is currently 27th at the moment, so she's uh, in the top 30 in the championship. And Petrova goes clear. I think with performance like this, she's definitely going to probably make the top 21 for the next round. So she's doing a really, really good job for herself and for Ukraine as well. Uh, Neil Gretz missed two targets, and looks like Rubikova does go clear, and she is going to get into second position. Zerbalova has gone clear, she'll go to start, so we've got two Ukrainians in the top three, potentially. That is a really, really good showing there from Ukraine uh, in this race. Uh, Sarnacina uh, missed three targets. Uh, where is Sixth, uh, Shellbridge? 
Uh, she'll be seen. Have I seen. Have, have I missed her or is she just not going to the shooting range yet? I must have missed her. Okay, so Petrova is well in front. There is second possession with Rubikova and Zerbalova. So we can see Rubikova is still in second possession at the moment, but I think there's a possibility Zerbalova might be closing in on the check. Try and make it a 1 2 for Ukraine. Yeah, that's definitely. On the oh Shellbread, okay, that finds Shellbread. She is in fourth position, twenty-five point nine seconds down. Okay, so she, I, I was worried that Shellbread might be towards the back, but no, Shellbread is among the top five. She's just quite a distance away from the top three by athletes. And again, Petrova is sixteen seconds ahead of second position, which says a lot how well she's doing in this race. And here we go, Olena Petrova coming into the shooting range for the fourth and final time in this race. Can she go clear once again and ensure she gets a really, really quick time? Okay, uh, Petrova's missed one target. What? Well, two misses from Petrova. Petrova is cracking under the pressure, it looks like. Here comes Rubico and Serbalova. Three misses from Petrova. Petrova cl clearly panicked, and well, I think the pressure that she could have won uh, easily won this race has definitely got the better of her. Or is our little Rubikova? Could Elon go clear? Maybe snatch the win? And Rubikova misses our last target. Zerbalova has missed two. What about Anna and Shellbread? Can she? Uh, yeah, Shellbread's going to go clear. But will it be enough for her to catch up and take the lead? It's going to be close, and I think uh, Petrova is just about going to hang on to first position. But oh my word, she's lost a lot of time. Shellbreaker is, is into second, Rubikova uh, right, just right behind in third position. Shellbread, out of nowhere, has got herself into the top two, which is a really, really uh, good comeback from the Norwegian, but it's not going to do her time any favours. Uh, Permakova, the second highest biathlete in 23rd, has missed four targets in the shooting range, and she's among those at the back, so... A bit of a disaster there for the Belarusians. That's definitely that's going to cost her a lot of time. And it's going to send her down the order for sure. Here we go. Third club only just a couple of kilometers left to go, and I think it's fair to say Elaine Petrova uh, just needs to hang on just to get to win this race and try and get herself a good time to try and hopefully get herself in the top twenty. Here we go, coming to the fourteen point two kilometer mark. I mean, Petrova is one and a half seconds ahead of Shellbread, so she's slowing down a little bit, or either that or Shellbread is increasing her speed, but Rubikova is uh, comfortably in third, and here we go, coming towards the finish line, Elena Petrova and Shellbread coming down towards, you know, Shellbread, sorry, coming towards the finish line, who is going to take the race when? And it looks like Petrova is just far enough ahead to ensure she will win this race with a night time, a 9 minutes 35.8, a really good time. Shellbread just, uh, Nearly half a second behind, but she does well to finish second. Rubikova is third. third fourth place going to Zerbralova, doing pretty well to stay in the top five. As we wait for everyone else to make their way across the finish line. And here we go, everyone has made it across the finish line. Petrova wins with a time of 9 minutes 35.8. Shellbread finishes second with Rubikova third, Zerbralova fourth. The two uh, French biathletes of Clara and Newgret, uh, fifth and sixth. Lampton in 7th, Satina 8th, Serenity in ninth, and Delphine Burlett rounds off your top 10. So that was quite a epic race we had. It's time for the first 21st race and we'll see who will end up being the overall leader at the end of this round. So here we go, this is the first to 21st race with your overall leader being Hildegard Mikopas starting in 19th followed by Nathalie Santer, the sole Italian, starting in 6th position and Svetlana Paragina starting at the back in 21st. Which one of them will win this race and who will remain as the championship leader? Let's get into this race and find out. So it's Belikova on the front row and we'll go on board with her as we get underway. So we've got two Russians on the front row. We've got uh, one of the French athletes on the front row as well. As we head over to the first kilometre race towards the back, it's all look, everyone's trying to gain positions as quickly as they possibly can. Try and get an early lead going into the first round of the shooting range. As we head over to the one kilometre mark, and who is going to get the early lead 
of this race as we are about to find out. And it is going to be Claudel that takes the lead, Green and Petter M and Talanova rounding off your top three with first down to 21st, separated by ten, six seconds with Laurie Tavares at the back for the United States of America. Uh, Mikkel Pass up to the 16th position uh, for herself, trying to get herself a good position going into the shooting range. And here comes the Bass, he's making the way to the 2.2 kilometre mark. Claudel still leads, Talanova second, Ush, uh, Ushi Bit, no, it's. Um, Petra Bell, sorry, not Ushi Bell, um, Petra Bell, who's fifth overall. As here we go, coming into the shooting range for the first time as Claudel and Talanova battling for a second. You think I'll be able to remember the names, but of course I can't. Here we go, into the shooting range we go. Who's going to go into the first slots for? Uh, it'll be Yushi Dissel with Parogenus uh, second in, Claudel third. And here we go. Who is going to come out for in first position? Ushi Dissel's missed the target. Paragenes missed one. Claudio uh, on a roll here, but it looks like Petra Bell. Oh no, Petra Bell's gone wide. In fact, Brianne's gone clear. So is Michael Pass. Natalie Santo. Greg Petra M. Okay, so far we've got a few bias leads that have gone clear. A lot of bias leads going into the penalty loop. With uh, Pet uh, Ushi Dissel with the most with three. So Claudio leads. Natalie Santa is second, Brian third. Then Mikkel Pass up to fifth position, the championship leader of this competition. Uh, first down to ten, separated by about twelve and a half seconds. And here we go, coming to the four kilometre mark. It is still Claudio up front with Nathalie Santos second, Brianne third. Uh, where is Claudio in the standings? Veronica Claudio is 11th in the standings, Nathalie Santos second, and Brianne is currently. And Brianne is 10th in the championship. With Mikkel Pass, the championship leader, is in the top five still. And here we go, coming to the 5.2 kilometre mark. The top three really close to each other. In fact, only one and a half seconds separates first from third. Well, the question is, can it all change in the shooting range? I imagine so, but we'll find out in due course. <coughs> and here we go, coming into the shooting range. Can Veronica Claudio hold on to the lead, or will Nathalie Santa or Ambriand sneak their way into the lead of this race? Here we go, into the shooting range they go. We'll be playing the waiting game now, we'll see what uh, fate has in store for them. And Brianne's missed the target, so is Graham Petter M. Claude's missed two, Brianne's missed two, Nathalie Sands missed two, Mikkel Pass has missed two, but Mikkel Pass and Graham uh, Petter M needs to go run around the penalty loop. Petra Bell's missed the last shot, so she might have gone to the lead of this race. Uh, Noskova uh, from Russia has gone clear. Luisa Noskova from Russia has gone clear. But, I don't, but will she be able to take the lead? No, it looks like um, Greer Petter M has taken the lead. Mikkel Pass right beside her in second position. Brianne third, Claude fourth. Noskova is in the top five now thanks to going clear. Natalie Sanders off to sixth position, which is co which is really not, uh, not good for her because that was her chance to take the lead of the race. Apparently, my second, no, third overall in the standings is 15th position, which is really not good. And Mikkel Pass is second, and Nathalie Santo, well, was she fifth or fourth or fifth? Grand Petterin pulling away from the Norwegian. In fact, Santo is sixth, right behind Noskova. And when Luisa Noskova is currently 16th in the championship standings, so this is a really good uh, position for her right now. As here we go, going to the 8.2 kilometre mark. Here we are, see them coming round the corner. And the German holds out, holds out on Mikkel Pass. Mikkel Pass still right close behind. In fact, six, the top seven are relatively close to each other. So it's literally anyone's game of who's going to go into the lead of the race. Here's the championship leader, uh, Helgen Mikkel Pass, trying to sneak her way past Greener Petter M. Now, Greener Petter M is actually 90s in the science, so the fact she's up to the top in the in the lead of the race is a really really good result for her. It'll definitely help her get get her further up the order. And here we go, a first round 
First of two sign, resin sign shoots. Who is going to come out first? It's really red. It's actually really close between eight uh, eight by athletes. I think top eight, top eight by athletes. Great Petterans gone wide. Had two misses from uh, Great Petterans. Okay, four misses. That's all of a sudden uh, turned into a nightmare for the German. But Mikkel passed the championship lead. Does go clear, and she does take the lead of the race. Petra Bell goes clear. Uh, Joe Mel Smith also missed four targets as well. Parajima goes clear. Christensen goes clear. Parajima really needs to go clear, especially when she's trying to catch up to the championship leader, who is a four second lead over Petra Bell in second. Natalie Santo coming out in uh, fourth position. Ambrian is third. Christensen is fifth. Parajima goes up into sixth position. That's exactly what she needed for a championship run. And here we go, coming to the 10 kilometer mark. In fact, looking back down to the third, this is Ambriand under pressure from Sobinathi Santo. Five seconds separating first and second position. There's Brian third. And there's Nathalie Santo coming through in fourth. Christensen down, down in fifth position. And there's sec the, the lady that's sec third overall in the standings. Paraging in sixth position. Chasing down. This will be chasing down after. Uh, if I can find Christensen, Ellen Christensen is seventh in the standings. And we're going back to our, our leader, that's Mikkel Passes. She's about to come in to the shooting range for the final time. See if she can finish strong and hope, and see if she can beat Petra Bell uh, to for the race win. Here we go into the shooting range. They go and let's see what fate has in store for these two athletes. It's quite close between them. Third and fourth, not too far behind as well, so it could be anyone's guess of who's going to win this race. And Mikkel Pass goes wide in her first shot. Uh, two misses from Mikkel Pass. This could cost uh, three misses from Mikkel Pass. This is going to cost her, um, toss her a lot of time. And Petra Bell goes clear, and she goes to take the lead of the race, which I think is going to be impossible for anyone else to catch her. Yeah, because everyone else within the uh, top seven or eight have all missed at least one tire so Petra Bell is going to run away with this race and take the win it looks like anyone else gonna, is anyone else going to go clear actually in this fourth round of the shooting range yes Telenova goes clear Great Petra M goes clear and Belova goes clear after um, a, an abysmal uh, first standing shoot for Green Petra M so this is basically a consolation for her We'll see if she can finish strong coming to the 13 kilometer mark. And Petra Bell, 8 minutes 23.3. That's a really, really good time uh, for the German. This is definitely help will help her out to catch up to Mikkel Pass. Maybe even maybe even take the lead of the championship. She's got a 10 second lead over Anne Briand uh, from France, who's just ahead of Nathalie Santa. And here goes uh, Petra Bell making her way through. The 4.2 kilometer mark. Mikkel Pass is still in the top six, so good, uh, good job for Mikkel Pass to hang on. But I think it's fair to say the damage done to the last round of the shooting range is going to has cost her dearly. As here comes Petra Bell to make her way across the finishing line and take the win of this first to twenty first race. And what is the time going to be? It's going to be a nine minutes ten point six, a really really quick time from the German. And now we just got to wait for everyone else to finish. And there's um, Brianne second, 10.3 uh, seconds down. Natalie Santa finishing in third. And here we go, we've got Parajima fourth, Christensen fifth, Mikkel Pass sixth, and Claudel goes into seventh. And here we go, everybody has made their way through the finish line. Petra Bell wins with 9 minutes 10.6. And Brianne is second with Natalie Santa third. Svetlana Parajima, who's uh, third in the ch overall standings, so finished in fourth, with Ellen Christensen fifth. The championship leader finishing in sixth position. There's Veronica Claudel, Nadja Talanova, Miriam Bedard, and Simone Grenin Petter M rounding off your top 10. So, with that exciting uh, round over, it's now time to check the championship standings who's leading the men's, who's leading the women's, and who's leading the respective nations' tables.
With the feature race out of the way, it's time to take a look at the standings and Sven Fischer does still lead the way in the men's competition with Patrice Bay Sands gaining three positions being second, Boost still goes into third ahead of Alexander Popov, then it's Tarasov, Lauren, Gross, Gredler, Dratchev and Zingel running off your top ten. And we look further down, we see Herfland and gaining 10 possessions to make his way into 11th, with Silkes Glim still down to 12th, with Mark Karsha going into 13th, with Bjorn Dylan, Reisenkopf, and Hanafold losing multiple possessions to be 14th, 15th, and 16th. Wolfgang Perner, Piabetto Carrara, Valery Karienko, and Jen Stagnan rounding off the top 20. So we go down to the top 30, we see Wilfai Paul Huber in 21st, with Joyce Teald in 22nd, Megarov 23rd, so all of them falling out of the top 20, Thasharin, Haitalati and Perot gain positions with Favre, Koth, Holobek and Zvonkov maintaining or dropping positions. Moving on to the men's nation's tail, France on average goes into the lead ahead of Germany by 8.9 seconds, Norway takes third, Belarus is in fourth, Russia overtakes Italy to be in the top five, with Italy down to six, Austria, Czech Republic, Slovenia and Ukraine rounding off the nation's top ten. Making our way over to the women's competition, Petra Bell is your new leader with gaining four positions with Natalie Santa going into second, Mikko Pass loses the lead and drops to third position with Svetlana Parajima going to fourth, there's Ambriand, Christensen and Claudel who've all gained positions, followed by Talanova, Ange Harvey and Anne Linnell back to round off your top ten. Looking further down in the top 20, Belikova is in 11th with Miriam Bedard in 12th. There's Belova, Sesnikova who maintain their positions. Shellback, Grenier Petter M is 13th and 16th with Luisa Nosko is 17th, Petrova 18th, Dafoska 19th for Bulgaria and Rubikova from Czech Republic rounding off your top 20. Going down to the top 30, Ushi Dissel and Joan Millsmith have lost quite a lot of possessions to be down 21st, 22nd, with Lloyd Tavares losing three possessions to follow the top 20. Emmanuel Claret, Ivan Karakazova, 24th, 25th, Corinne Nielgren and Berlin, 26th and 27th, two Ukrainians of Serbnicina and Zerbalova, 20 and 29, and Natalia Snitina rounding off the top 30. So looking at the women's nations tables, Norway are in the lead by 8.6 seconds over Germany, France overtakes Russia to be in third, with Russia fourth, Ukraine fifth, the United States and Czech Republic both get ahead of Belarus who fall down to eighth position, with Bulgaria ninth and Finland rounding off your top ten. And finally in the mixed uh, nations table, a mixture of the women's and men's competition, Germany hold on to the lead by just 1.9 seconds of France who have jumped Norway into second place, Italy going to fourth, Russia is fifth, Belarus sixth, Czech Republic and Ukraine swap possessions for seventh and eighth, Slovenia ninth and round of your top ten is the United States. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you look forward to the third round of the season where we'll find out if things will be different. So hopefully you'll join me there and we'll see what happens.